Oh, that's right. We are right here at Sharp Facets Gallery. I told you we were going to have a special appearance here at the final hour before the election, or before the primary, excuse me, tomorrow. We have Robert Tinsley right here with us. And uh, Robert, it is good to have you here. Now, uh, you, of course, have had some issues. You were on the ballot, and then through unfortunate circumstances, they uh, took you off the ballot. And I know you want to talk about that, but first let's uh, verify that you are now running as an independent? Independent petition candidate. And, and what exactly does that mean? That means that I have to get 5% of the registered voters to sign a petition to uh, put me back on the general election ballot in November as an independent petition candidate. Now, what is the time frame that you have to get that get that done? I have it to have it done by July the 16th. By July 16th, so you still have some time left to go. How goes the uh, petition? Uh, I would estimate approximately 2,000 signatures so far. And How many do you need? I need 6,000 to be 6, safe. 5,500 is the uh, minimum, but... You're not taking any chances, are you? Don't take any... <laughs> assumptions. I, I, I assumed too much as it was when I left the South Carolina uh, Democratic Party in Columbia and they said, you are done, you have completed everything, you have nothing else to do. I even brought another attorney there with me and plenty of time to run any errands or go cover any bases we needed covered. And now, now what exactly happened? Because you're talking about the day you went down there to register to uh, run for solicitor in this district. What happened? Well, we, were, we waited until the uh, last day to go because we wanted to assess as late as possible what the competition would be. Sure. And when we saw that there was only one opponent, we were excited. On the, on the Democratic side. On the Democratic side. We yes. were excited and uh, uh, ready to sign it and do all the, the necessary paperwork, which we did and completed. Um, there was some, some time delay because of, uh, 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 I don't know, inefficiency, uh, computer glitch, whatever one may choose to call it. That, uh, but still, everything was stamped, 1145. And you had what till twelve o'clock? Till twelve o'clock. Eleven forty five AM is, is what everything is stamped. And I was uh, uh, I was told as I the computer clicked and said it was completed, the lady who was assisting me, I asked her specifically, now what else do I need to do to to to, to complete the process? And she said, Absolutely nothing. You're done. You're 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 complete and you are accurately and positively certified. And then what happened? And, uh, we had heard rumors that there was a, a decertification process going on, and we wondered about that because it was the issue was statement of economic interest being filed simultaneously or otherwise with uh, the other two forms that had to be filed. Well, the first form that I filed was my statement of economic interest. So therefore, I didn't really worry about it in my case because I, kn I knew I had done that and uh, the other two followed right behind it. So, uh, it, so was it, it a question of order because you did it first? How can you do anything simultaneously? I know, I know, but but is that what they're saying? No, we should have no, been last no, or no? No, no man, it, it, it's not that at all. Uh, it was listed in the uh, computer program, mm -hmm. uh, the order that you followed, and we followed the order according to the uh, to the uh, requirements of the program. So, what's wrong? Why are you not on the ballot? That's a great question, and I think that the answer is that the person who was supposed to push the button, so to speak, mm -hmm. and send it on over to the Ethics Commission and the Election Commission 
fail to do their job at that point, uh, whether that be intentionally or unintentionally, I have no idea, but they say they got it at either tw the State Ethics Commission says 1223. Uh, Chris Trainer has a tape that says when he asked the uh, Election Commission what time did Tinsley file, where they say on tape from these uh, papers, I can't tell. And that has really bugged me because clearly, clearly, I filed in time, sent, a, sent the proof back to the party to certify me in plenty of time, and got no response. Therefore, uh, I'm proud of my independent status. Um, <laughs> Are you a Democrat anymore? <laughs> no, I'm an independent. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm an independent. They forced me to, to independent. Uh, status and, in fact, independent petition status. Does that bother you about the Democratic Party? It really bothers me about the inefficiency of the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party in Colombia has become a, uh, a, 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 a uh, what you call a inefficient bureaucracy. And because of that, see if I'd had to file here with, with Connie Moody at the Greenwood voter registration. We wouldn't be talking about this, would we? No, we'd be discussing a completely different issue. This, this would not be Why did you concern. go down there? Just out of curiosity, why did you go to Columbia? I had to. You had to? You couldn't file here in Greenwood? Absolutely not, because it was a four-county race. Abbeville, Greenwood. So everybody had to file? Um, everybody that's in the solicitor's race had to file down had, there in Columbia? Had to file in Columbia. There were less requirements on the incumbent uh, piece than there were on, on the others. Um, but I, I, I just can't figure out how 1145 became 1222 or 1223 when all it took was a, 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 a mash a couple of buttons and, and the copies are there. I had my man on standby the whole, the whole morning we were there. We waited. Do you have anything date stamped that says that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, I've got. And and even when you showed the papers, they still they still wouldn't uh, do anything about it. Did absolutely nothing. Did not even respond to my uh, my. Uh, 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 Did you file some? I don't know some brief I, or something. I, I, something I, you could file, I presume, as an attorney. I sent a out. copy of all of of a sworn affidavit by myself, by uh, the attorney who went with me, and the. Uh, documents that were timed and stamped 11.45 a.m. and requested uh, that I be re put back on the ballot and uh, never even received the, re the dignity of a response. And that would be from the State Sou ele Election Committee? or No, the South Carolina Democratic Party. Oh, okay. Who is, you know, lost probably um, their uh, one of their one of their uh, greatest supporters in this area, and that that and that's that's the kind of loss that frees me up to. I'm, I've always been an independent thinker, and and uh, and thought outside the box, so to speak, and this allows me to think uh, really outside the box, way outside <laughs> the box, and it allows me. The kind of independence that politicians need in this day and age. I don't need to be tied to uh, Mitt Romney. I don't need to be tied to Barack Obama, whom I've met twice, by the way, and I uh, enjoyed meeting him. That was that was fine. He's done some good things I approve of. He's done some things that I disapprove of. Sure. Um, just like any politician. Absolutely. And but this allows me to be more creative, more inventive, and while many candidates that you've heard, and particularly for solicitor of the Eighth Judicial Circuit, speak of their uh, high 
qualities, et cetera, et cetera, experience, et cetera, et cetera. I've tried more cases than all three of them put together, I mean, by far. A lot of criminal cases? Criminal cases. And you've been a defense or a prosecutor? I've been a uh, def uh, criminal defense. There's only one sol solicitor. I have no interest in being a number two man. I never have been. I don't ever intend That's to That's why be. you're a part of your own, uh, own law practice, is Ten that right? Tensely and tensely. <laughs> And 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 I uh, uh, now I do consider uh, my partner to be my my, my co-equal. Right. But that's that's the. Uh, Is that your brother? That's my son. Your son. Okay. And 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 it would not be that way it, it working for a solicitor or a head public defender. In my and 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 back in the uh, late eighties and. Early 90s, our public defender became quite ill uh, for Abbeville and Greenwood. It's a different system then. Very low funded, very, very archaic. Well, I became the acting public defender for a number of years until, unfortunately, Mr. Hall passed away. Uh, I believe it was in 90. And I, I, I became the official public defender then. Um, it was it was uh, a great opportunity to learn how to do that job as well as this job. Now my career goes back to trying cases uh, with and against W. T. Jones, even past uh, his son. Uh, Towns Jones and uh, I, I had the, the privilege of, of, of uh, having that much experience and um, opportunity. Now as a defense attorney does that give you, do you think because you come up against the, the solicitor's office, whoever it is, Towns or now right now Jerry Peace, uh, does that give you the opportunity to see how they work? Oh, absolutely. It gives you the opportunity to, the key to trying a case is to anticipate, anticipate what the other side is strategy is going to be and what they are going to do, mm -hmm. what their next move will be. And like a game of chess. Or chess checkers, and checkers, yes, yeah. either one, uh, 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 point, counterpoint. Exactly. And But getting back to the public defender's office, I was able to, uh, I, when, when I started it off, it, it almost broke me because it was, it was a, it was a, I got a part-time secretary at $200 a week. And when, when, when Hall died and it was around January uh, of, of 90, I think it was, the first term of court in Greenwood came up and the phone rang and the answer was, Judge. The judge said, where are you? I said, I'm at home contemplating my, my plans. And he said, get up here, you're the public defender. <laughs> so I didn't have much choice. But I was able to go out, get permanent location at, at Park Plaza for, from the county. I fielded a federal grant, hired the first uh, assistant public defender, for Greenwood and Abbeville counties, uh, Lee Alexander, who unfortunately later she passed on. She was a uh, lady of, of great talent. And then I hired, she and I hired together, we've hired a candidate in another race uh, that you're dealing with, I think, and that's uh, Miss Felicia Moten, uh, candidate uh, in the clerk's race, I believe. And uh, we uh, then hired, uh, next was a young black attorney, Randall Williams, and we grew from there uh, by getting state uh, grants. grants, federal grants, uh, getting more money from the counties, office space, and built up a, a, very, uh, a very good uh, team, including a in-house investigator, which I think is crucial for our public defender's office. 
But that was public defending. That was not being the solicitor, solicitor correct? That is correct. That is correct. Even though I have sat uh, in the prosecution of cases with the late W.T. Jones as uh, second chair. Now, what do you think qualifies you for this job, Robert? So you we're talking about the solicitor's office. You, as you said, you've been a public defender. You've been in private practice. What qualifies you to step in and take the reins and run this office? Besides my many years of experience and the most distinguishing factor is my knowledge of the people of the Eighth Judicial Circuit. Are we talking criminals, or what are we talking about here? We're talking. About, <laughs> we're talking about the people. The people in general. The All people. people. I okay. grew up a mile from here. Okay. I, I grew up a mile west of here, from where you and I are talking today. I was born here April third, nineteen fifty-three. My family is uh, a family of lawyers. As a matter of fact, my father practiced law here for nearly 50 years in the law firm Tinsley and McGowan. My brother has pra practiced law here for, for over 40 years. I've practiced for over 30 years. Have you had any choice in what career you picked? I just need to ask this question. Coming from a family of lawyers, did you have a choice? Oh, sure. <laughs> I, just, I just thought I'd ask that, yeah. Absolutely, I had a choice. If I, if I had my uh, dream job, I guess I'd be uh, a professional golfer. Professional golfer, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that would be, uh, be kind of like paradise, I think. Yeah, exactly. Now, so uh, you really love golf. Now, uh, we just had a call in, Brett Hardesty, I think it is. No matter how great a lawyer someone is, they will not succeed in this job as solicitor unless they are great administrators. What do you say to that, Robert? Well, I'd say I had the administrative skills from the uh, public defender's office when I, uh, when I administered that office in uh, two counties and uh, built that staff up to a, a, a pretty sizable staff at, at one point. Uh, administration is very important, but the, 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 the key is this, and this is what distinguishes me from the competition. In order to make this thing work, You've got to be able to and willing to roll up your sleeves and go to the jails the weeks before court starts. You are an assistant, or both together, or one in one county, or two in one county, and you in another county, and sign up the guilty people who want to plead guilty the following week in front of the judge. And that it was a system that I implemented back in my public defender days, which is a uh, area of administration, which and the advantage to that is money to money. the counties. Okay, you get people out of jail into the prisons or whatever the sentence the judge may give them, but he's not going to be sentencing them uh, back to that jail. They're, they may unless it's a real minor charge, they may get a 30-day sentence or something like that. But that's rare. Usually they're either going to prison or probation or uh, some alternative drug treatment facility or what have you. That They're not... Uh, and, and see, any inmate is going to call Screenwood County uh, or Admiral County or Newberry County or Lawrence County X dollars per day. Sure. Forty, fifty dollars. Estimates range, change from time to time. It depends. It may be a medical uh, situation that is enormously expensive and, and, and to the point where it would be, uh, it would be, it would be just, just ghastly to what it may possibly cost Greenwood County with a heart patient, with a type 1 diabetic, what do you think about prosecution, though? Do, do you think, um, as, as a solicitor, of course, you would have the right to decide what cases actually do come before the judge, correct? And how hard should crime be dealt with? This is what I would do. Okay. The first day of the first week in any given county, I would call the oldest murder case to trial. I would have the jury in that morning and qualified. 
the uh, 12 man jury and alternates picked, hopefully by the lunch hour. The trial would start that afternoon, and uh, hopefully that person would be convicted after however many hours, days that trial took. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, I would make the uh, office to move the docket from the uh, audience and the jail. Of course, going back to the point that I had been to the jail, mm -hmm. along with the administration of the office with four counties, it's double what I had back then, but the staff is ten times when I originally did it. And I did it myself, the head public defender. I didn't send anybody else to do it. I did it. And I would be willing to do it as the head solicitor. And I would be, you know, if, if we had court in two counties at the same time, I may send someone to uh, another county, or, let's say a, to, to, to Abbeville, I may send one to Abbeville, and I would go to Greenwood myself, or I may send two to Greenwood and one to Abbeville, possibly myself, and, and, and sign these. There are a lot of people in jail that are ready to plead guilty. Yes, and you know I understand that sometimes they look at the judges and think they'll get a more lenient sentence, so they'll go in front of this judge. A lot of them come on in front of the court saying they're going to go for a trial and then at the last minute decide to plead. Um, what do you have to say about some of those issues? I'm sure as a defend as a as a uh, defense attorney, you see this and you work the angles too, don't you? Well, there's nothing more frustrating than to spend hours and hours and hours preparing uh, for one of these fake trial type clients. That, that, is, that is a real uh, waste of resources. So from that point of view, uh, it's not very pleasing. However, from the point of view of seeking justice for that client and going out and investigating all witnesses, all facts, mm -hmm. all evidence, Sure. then it certainly should be done in all cases. And I commend any defense lawyer or uh, prosecutorial law attorney uh, who does that. That's called doing your homework. Due diligence, right? Due diligence. There you go. <laughs> all right. Hey, we are here with Robert Tinsley. He is running as an independent for the solicitor's office. If you've got a question, we've already gotten some questions coming in, give us a call, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. Give us a call. We're going to hear a quick word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Um, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? Or a college tuition hung on a wall? Or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box? Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. All right, we're back here with Robert Tinsley. And Robert, I just want to ask you, you know, I don't know whether you wore this for me or not, but you've got a red carnation on here today. You're looking pretty spiffy. What's, what's, the, what's the deal? Well, and thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. I, I, I received this yesterday when I spoke at Connie Maxwell Children's Home. Uh, my great-great-grandfather great, uh, great was Dr. A.T. Jameson, who was superintendent of Connie Maxwell for 47 years and preacher at uh, Connie Maxwell Baptist for 34 of those years. And yesterday was the church's 100th anniversary. So they, they, he always wore either a red rose or a red carnation. So the men uh, all wore it yesterday in tribute to him. Looks nice. Thank you. Thank yeah, you That's very a nice much. sentiment, nice sentiment. You know, you. Connie Mack has done so many good things in this area and such a big, actually a big employer right here in our area. It's, it's a tremendous asset to Greenwood. In fact, I've had so many people from out of town ride by and, and say, now what's the name of this college? Yeah. It looks like a college campus, doesn't it? It, it really does. And I said, that's not a college, that's a children's home. 
You know, I was on an honor flight, and I've told this story before, so you all have to listen to it again. I went on an honor flight uh, back May 23rd. I was telling somebody I was from Greenwood. Somebody in the seat in front of me turned around and said, my sister-in-law brother and brother are house parents at Connie Mac. So you just never know where you're going to meet people that know about Connie Mac. Yeah. It's, it's, they're spread far and wide and have had great impact upon our society, and, and almost all of it's been positive. Absolutely. Now, um, one of the things, one of the issues is, of course, for the solicitor is the size of the docket. There are a lot of cases, and of course we are spread over four counties on top of that. One of the, one of the questions that I have is, how do you handle a big docket? It's one thing if you have ten cases and you have two weeks to try them. It's another thing when you have a huge number of cases. How do you dispense with and work the cases? Well, um, Mr. Stumbo, as you said, uh, uh, stated that he would come in trying cases. Well, that's good, and I, I'm all for trying murder cases, child molesters, uh, and other serious violent uh, criminals as quickly as possible. However, you have to mix in the pleas. Now, I'm going to give you an example here that states my ability to do it. In the mid-1990s, I came out of Abbeville County on a Friday afternoon after one week of court. There were 14 continued cases on that docket, seven of which were mine as public defender. Now that is docket control and docket control at its best. We kept a tight docket in Greenwood. The numbers would rarely drift over uh, the low hundreds, very low. Nothing like what we see today. Well, and, now you, of course, are in a defense attorney, so you're working in general sessions. Is general sessions in right now? or It started today. It started for two today. weeks. Right. For two okay. weeks in Greenwood. That's right. <laughs> and there's a primary election tomorrow. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it, it, it is amazing. And uh, it, it's. The court never stops. It's it's you, you of course also have your lower courts, your magistrate and city courts and, and, and various other courts, probate and, and and things like that that are that are also very important. But uh, my, my my specialty is is general sessions, no question about it. And and how how would you hand I mean it is a big docket, isn't it, right here in Greenwood? As I mentioned, I take that oldest murder case in every county call it to trial that first Monday morning and try it myself. And that's what I would do. I would I would roll up my sleeves and get my and get my hands dirty because they've got to be tried and they've got to be tried in a way that is is effective and sends a message to those who are sitting on that fence post or fence line that you mentioned about uh, should I plea or should I go to trial. Uh, uh, when you when you give that first murder or that life sentence as planned, if things work out appropriately, and there's no guarantees, uh, that would tend to encourage the uh, uh, drug defendant, for instance, or the larceny defendant, for instance, or whatever uh, lesser crime, to hey, I'm going to eat some humble pie and belly up to the uh, 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 bench in this case because the bar is the it's bar is, and, the bench, <laughs> and the bench is the judges. Right. And 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 our judges are fair. We're we're, we're dealing with fair judges. We're, we're we're are the judges too lenient? I don't think so because we're in an economic time now where we don't have any money to house nonviolent criminals unless they're just such repeat offenders, there's just no other choice. If, if, they're, if they're youthful offenders, first time, let's get them on the right track if we can. Let's at least give that a shot. Right. Uh, we've got here the Faith Home, for instance, tremendous program. If, if someone would commit to that program to help them with, 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 a, with their problem, they are well on their way to rehabilitation. Now, what do you think about drug court? I like drug court. What I think, do you think? Should that be expanded? I do think it should be expanded. It's, expen it's too expensive. 
currently, and it, it should be and it should include more people. Uh, it should not. Uh, it should, it, it should not be as restrictive as it is. Uh, granted, you can't have everybody in that. You, you do, there's two, there's three groups of drug offenders. One, users. That's the saddest group. Mm -hmm. Two, the user who sells to support his habit. Mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in the middle, but uh, they're a problem, a real problem. But not nearly the problem that the pusher the, the, the dealer, the, the, the seller, the, the money maker is, and, and that's, that's, that's rare that we are able to find and catch those in those upper echelons because they tear themselves in such a way that it's hard for law enforcement to get to them as good a job as our law enforcement officers do. How do you think our law enforcement does in this area? You know, I think we've seen a, a positive move as far as the city and the sheriff's office, the county, working together. That's made a big difference. But day in and day out, how do you think they do? And when it comes to, to trying a case, you being at this moment on the defense side, how do you find their work? I find our, our officers to be loyal, devoted, affected, dedicated, and doing <laughs> above and beyond their pay scale. In fact, I think we have excellent, uh, an excellent sheriff's department, excellent uh, city police department. Um, we, we, uh, we, we, have, we have not just Greenwood either, by the way, Ann. Mm -hmm. I, I, that, this goes circuit-wide, uh, by and large. We have a dedicated uh, crew of, of, of officers who, who, do, who do fine, fine work. And, 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 and I could say that it's, it's, very, uh, it's very humbling to, to see these folks put their lives on the line, uh, even though normally uh, it's just maybe a routine call. But you know, the most dangerous call of all, according to statistics and officers that I've talked to, is the normal uh, or seemingly normal Practice. criminal dom domestic right. violence call, the sure. CDV call, the uh, because emotions are running high, weapons may be available, uh, people are out of control, possibly intoxicated or some other kind. Well, of I think we've seen an increase too, particularly based on this economy. You know, people are stressed out a whole lot more than they were a few years ago. It was a lot easier to live with someone when you had plenty of money. Great point. <laughs> <laughs> Great point. Exactly. And socioeconomic impact is is amazing, and it is clearly, clearly a factor in this. And and if someone is is can't get a job, or can't take care of his family, and, and they become they become depressed, they become uh, they become sometimes very dangerous. Absolutely. So um, as, as far as uh, some of the other things, we've talked a little bit about docket management. Now, what about some of these cases that take forever to bring forth? I mean, we have some cases that d just go on and on and on. What would you be able to can, as solicitor, can you affect that? I believe that I could. Uh, there's no reason for a case to last more than two years. Now, you may have a couple of officers who are, uh, let's say, let's say for example, they're in the guard, they're in the National Guard, or the Reserve, mm -hmm. and they are uh, sent to Afghanistan. Well, obviously, that's going to delay the case. <laughs> they're there's, not here. Yes. There's, there's no way around it. Now, another way to save the county some money here is kind of an aside, is the use of ankle bracelets and other housebound... Uh, uh, do we use those here? Yes, we do. We do? Okay. We do. We do. I have, I have some clients out uh, in their homes with ankle bracelets, and they can tell ex Eagle Eye is the name of the company. Eagle Eyes? Eagle Eye. <laughs> okay, that, they got their eye on you. That's just one. Right. And they, they can tell everywhere you go. Wow. And if you stray too far from that, uh, and I'm not technologically uh, 100%, in this area, but if you stray too far from that point of reference, bingo, 
it sends off the bell, and they come get you. Wow. Okay. And, and, and well, that is another problem, isn't it, too, the overcrowding in the, in the jails and getting people. And, and, and I also understand that once somebody gets out on bond, it seems a little bit more difficult to get them to plead and, and this type of thing because now they're out. What, what do you say about that? Well, generally, if someone gets out uh, and behaves mm -hmm. and it's been, let's say, six months, They've continued to behave. The crime was uh, relatively minor. Uh, they they will be rewarded for that good behavior, even though it was not in 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 the jail except the first part sure. until the making of bonds. Sure. It's a good thing to, to to watch a person for. And I often tell clients they don't maybe like to hear it. I often suggest a thirty day. Uh, uh, stay in the county jail uh, for the purpose of a life learning lesson. And if they do that, uh, I think it's inevitable that they will have that experience. Uh, I've also seen many times where people go in for one night, get out the next day, a month later, they're back in again. That's not the way to teach the lesson. That, that's that's almost as unfair to the jailers and the police as it is. It's just about as unfair to the defendant because let them sit a while. Let them, let them eat, a, 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 eat a little uh, crow. It's, it's, it's tough in there. It's, it can get rather, uh, rather depressing. And Now, I'm not encouraging uh, 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 that in, in all cases by any means, but if you see, if you've tried other alternatives, for instance, and they haven't worked, then I, I think a, 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 a stretch like that is, is a good is a good short term solution, and then of course you've got your career criminals, and your career criminals you want to uh, you want to prosecute them for the right thing that's going in that career. Absolutely. Now, um, if, if you were to become solicitor, what would be the most important thing you would concentrate on? The one thing that I would concentrate on is the attempt to thwart the rise of gangs in the Eighth Circuit. And the only way that this can be done is, uh, of course, uh, police and police infiltration of these gangs so that they know from their sources what's going on what's being planned, mm -hmm. what big is going down, what murder is being planned. What Do we have gangs? Yes, we definitely have gangs. Is it something that is growing? I think it is, definitely. I went to a gang seminar uh, in Lawrence four years ago and uh, when I ran, and there was a uh, former uh, blood, that being the name of a gang, who had come into Lawrence for one week prior and toured the county and the city and Clinton and the whole area extensively to identify the what he knew that you and I don't know. Okay. I know more than you, but <laughs> but the symbols, right. the the clothing, the markings, uh, the things that it, he along with a city police officer and a, uh, a sheriff's officer were able to identify that time, this is four years ago, mm -hmm. and now 23 loosely knit gangs in Lawrence County. Wow. And now that is including 26, Highway Interstate 26, and some, some things that would, sure. would we, we may not have quite as bad here, but uh, they're, they're at least, uh, at least a half a dozen that I could name in Greenwood. Now, the the drug issue seems to be a much bigger issue here in Greenwood, and also the sexual predator, the sexual molestation. This is these are two issues that have grown, or or are in the public eye more. One of the two, I'm not sure which. Oh yes, but drugs, the drug, drugs is relates a lot to other crimes and 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 the 
The frustrating part for law enforcement, I think, is the inability to get to the top. It's, it's hard. It's almost impossible. It's, it's, they shield themselves so well. They've got people who are, uh, are, are, are protecting them, let's say, from the, uh, from the police, and, and, and that, that's a problem. And then the, 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 the users who are committing the crimes to, to, to provide the uh, uh, funding for the problem. And, and then that middle group I mentioned who are doing both. Sure. So, so drugs is an issue, and then... You mentioned sexual uh, predators. predators. Right. To me, that is such a tragedy in this and all three counties because the fact that it scars the victim so deeply and, and so permanently. And it takes a, a strong person to break the chain. And this is a, a, the kind of thing where it passes down oftentimes. And it takes a strong person who has had that molestation occur to them to say, no, it stops with me. There will be no more. And that, that's, your, that's, your good, that's your good people. But from a criminal standpoint, how be, should we handle that? They opinion? should be slammed. Slammed? They, they should be slammed. There's, there, there can't be, there can't be a, a, a lot of mercy for, for, for these type of people. One of the problems is that oftentimes the victims are so young and they can't either, they're too young to testify, they don't know what happened. It, 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 sure. it, it, it traumatizes them worse to go to, you know, take the stand. But I think if you've got victims that are of, of, of any substantial age and intelligence and the ability to describe what happened to them, try that man, try that woman, try that person who has committed that heinous crime. Because to me, I would rather represent one charged with murder if I had, say, a self-defense or some sort of uh, reasonable defense than, than one that uh, were charged with uh, sexual child molestation. Well, you know that uh, the Jerry Sandusky case started today, and that is going to be just a, that's going to be a horrific case. It all the is, way down the line. It is. No question. There'll be no winners there. Absolutely. But, um, um, Robert, we've only got a few minutes left. Is there some issue that I haven't covered that you would like to cover? Well, getting back to the, uh, to what happened to me. Um, since I was uh, knocked off the ballot, uh, one event I was invited to speak at twice. And I came and I sat and I listened to a bunch of speakers. And then uh, all the other candidates for the solicitor spoke and I, they said they'd go on to the next. I said, wait a minute, I haven't spoken. And it made me very angry that they did not allow me to speak. Had me sit there and listen to all these other speakers, embarrassingly told me I could not speak. I thought it was a very un-American act on their part. And, and, and why didn't they just call me and say, hey, since you're not on the ballot? I said, fine. I had no problem with that. Or when I got there, why didn't they say, oops, there's been a mistake. You're not going to be allowed to speak. Why did they have me sit in front? And, and look, that's the kind of thing. I just almost feel like there's a, 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 a situation going on here where that, that's bigger than you, bigger than me, bigger than... This is what America is all about, what America and Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and uh, James Madison all stood for. And that is voting, making it easier. As Senator O'Dell said earlier, uh, I don't know if it was on the record, but he stated that it should be easier to run for office, not harder. It should be easier to vote, well, not I, harder. I, I, I think this issue, whether it's your issue or across the state, I mean, the people that were just bumped off, 
last week because they found some irregularity and their names are all on the ballot. I know of one case up there in Anderson where uh, one of the sheriffs, they're, they're going to have his name up there. If you vote for this, your vote will not count. This is the type of stuff that I agree with you, Robert, that is totally beyond the pale. And it seems like if people go out and put their names in good faith to run and there was that much ambiguity about it, something should have been done about it to uh, let these people on. And I think that if I uh, filed in time, which I did, in good faith, uh, which I did, with uh, reliance on what I thought were party professionals, which I did, um, that, that everything was in order and paid the fee, no questions there, any, any problems there, and then find out no courtesy of even a phone call, no explanation. Nothing but, uh, you know, I'm righteously indignant, and when I... It was embarrassing. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Sorry, Robert, I had to say that. But I tell you what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you two minutes to tell the people why now... Are you, you're not on the ballot for tomorrow, are you? Or, no, I'm not. not. You're not on the ballot for tomorrow. Your objective is to... Receive 6,000 signatures from the registered voters of the eight judicial circuit, Abbeville, so Greenwood, Lawrence, and Newberry, and I asked those friends, supporters, volunteers, and just those seeking justice to sign those petitions and do so by July the 13th. That gives now how me, do they get a hold of you, Robert? They get a hold of me at my law office, 223-0770, or my, uh, 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 at the Garrett firm, 229-8000. Um, our, my home, 223-6341. Um, we're always signing. Is there a place you have the petition set up? Where, I mean, can they come by a law office and sign it? Or? Yeah, my law office and the Garrett uh, law office. And not only that, we can register you to vote. We have the, uh, the proper paperwork and authority to do that. So it, and that'll be for July. You'd have to have that done by July... Uh, that needs to be done. Um, th that needs to be done immediately for the July signatures. But for the November election, it needs to be done at least 30 days in if advance. If you want to, for registering to vote, and you can help people with registering to vote. But if you would like to help Robert, you just need to get a hold of him either at any of those locations at his law office and sign the petition. I personally think it's a travesty of of everybody's rights to be able to vote. So now, if you raise the 6,000 signatures, then you will be on the ballot for November as an independent. Correct. And that's what I'm hoping for and excited about. And I, I really like that, that label. And I, I'm not a label person, <laughs> but I, I really, independent uh, appeals to me in, in this, in this uh, situation. Because that's what I am. I'm, I'm, I'm an independent petition candidate. Absolutely. So the best way that if you'd like to help Robert is to sign the petition so that his name will be on the ballot in November. Would that be correct, Robert? Absolutely, Ann. Absolutely. Well, listen, it has been great having you here. Would you like to take a minute and tell people why you should be the next solicitor, why they should come sign your petition so that you can be on the ballot in November? Yes, I would. I'll, I'll say this. I think I'm the wisest choice with the most trial experience as well as uh, certainly adequate uh, administrative experience as the caller questioned earlier uh, and also because of the fact that I feel that I have the keenest sense of justice and the ability to distinguish the truly heinous criminal from the kid who needs maybe a stint in the military, maybe a rehabilitation program, a, a, a kick in the, what you would call it, and, 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 pants, I'll say it for you, Robert, okay, you okay. <laughs> and, and, and get them headed in the right direction. But we've got a, we've got a red eye streets of, of the violent of the violent criminals and the and the child molesters and and really uh, the, the gang problem 
it, and, and, and it's, it's, it's also got to be dealt with. And I think I'm the most qualified to do it because I'm, I'm, I'm from the heart of this circuit. I've lived my whole life in this circuit. I'm a graduate of the University of Virginia, which Thomas Jefferson himself founded, and the University of South Carolina School of Law with decades of experience and most of that time has been spent has been spent trying cases. Absolutely. Well, you've been listening to Robert Tinsley. He is running for solicitor. He needs to uh, collect 6,000 signatures in order to be on the ballot in November. He has to do that by uh, mid-July. So if you'd like to help Robert, what's that telephone number one more time, Robert? That's 223-0770. All right. Thank you so much, Robert, for coming out this afternoon. And it's always a pleasure to be with you, and I thank you for having me. All righty. That's going to do it for us. This is WCRS. I think we'll catch the end of the news, and then we'll hear a word from our sponsors. Don't you go away. South Carolina Sports Talk's up next. Bye-bye, everybody. These videos will be posted tonight for you to be able to look at. So check out our webpage, AnsEntertainmentVision.com. That's AnsEntertainmentVision.com. Have a special